Welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications using ArcGIS. In our last video session, we had a satellite image and we used the maximum likelihood classifier to create a classified image. And then we color coded based on the values inside every pixel of that classified image. So for example, the values started with a single digit of one, we color code some color for turbid water all the way down to the values that start with a six, we color code to some unvegetated color. In this session, we're gonna do a quantitative accuracy assessment of this classified image. And to do that, what we're gonna do is use ground truth points, and then basically for every ground truth point, what was the pixel value in our classified image? Okay, so you can load this point layer from this week's data, and it's basically 60 points. And if we look at the attribute table for these 60 points, we've got six classes, and we've got 10 ground truth points for each of the six classes. So what we could do is we could symbolize these points, going to properties, and then symbology, and then categories. So for every different value of truth, add that value. So we have six different categories. And then we'll symbolize these points. So some symbol for turbid water, clear water, broadleaf forest, conifer forest, shrubland, and unvegetated. Okay, so I gave a different marker symbol for each value from the point field named truth. And what we could do is we can open up the attribute table for truth, and we'll first turn on our satellite image. And we could assess, for example, this point, it should be in turbid water. So if we double click on this column, here's the point and it's in turbid water. And to see it, we need to change our selection color. So if we go to selection options, if it's select, selected, let's change the color. So our selection color will be red this time. So there's the point, and it is indeed in turbid water. And we could go all the way down to our last point. So there's our last point, and it is indeed in an unvegetated area. So if I zoom out, you can see that it's in Eielson Air Force Base runway. Okay, so the key question is, for each ground truth point, does it agree with our classified raster? So what we need to do is we need to reclassify our maximum likelihood output into values matching our ground truth values. So our ground truth values are one through six, so we need to change these values so they're also one through six. So to do that, we're gonna use the geoprocessing tool called reclassify. Okay, so our input raster will be our output from our maximum likelihood classification. And what we need to do is reclassify all the old values into new values. So for example, if we have a single digit of one, the new pixel value will be a one. And if we have a single digit of a two, the new pixel value will be a two. And we do that all the way down to our last, our unvegetated class, anything 666. So basically we're gonna do that for every old value, reclassify it into a new value ranging from one through six. Okay, and when we're done, we'll output a raster called predict.tiff to some folder, and then just okay. Okay, so now we have a raster with values ranging one through six, and we can color code this raster, the appropriate color. Well, one will be turbid water color, all the way to six to be a non-vegetated color. Okay, so basically what we wanna know is for each of these ground truth points, what pixel value is associated with the location of each ground truth point? So to answer that question, we'll use a tool that will go to every point and then extract the pixel value for that point location. 
Okay, so the tool is extract values to points. So our input points will be our ground truth points. And the raster we're interested in is our predict raster. So once again, our predict raster has values ranging from 1 to 6, and our ground truth points have values ranging from 1 to 6. And that will create a new point feature class, so I'll output that to a folder. So the output will be points, and each point will have the original truth value from this point feature class, and also the pixel value from this raster, and then just OK. So here's our output from that geoprocessing tool. We've got 60 points, and for each point we have the original ground truth value and what the pixel value was at that point location. Okay, so the field name raster value is not very descriptive. What we'll do is we'll make a new field called predict and then move this information into that new field. So we'll add a field and we'll name this field predict. So this will be our pixel values that were our predictions. And then we'll use the field calculator to move that information into this field. So predict equals what the pixel value was. And then we'll delete this original field. So right mouse click. Okay, so what we want to know is for each point that was in a certain ground truth class, how many predictions were correct. So to do that, we'll use the frequency tool and basically say for every different truth value, how many different predict values were there. Okay, so here's our frequency table. <clears throat> the input table will be our truth predict values. And our output table, I just named it frequency table.dbf, and I put it in a folder. And what we want to do is for every different truth class, so values ranging from 1 to 6, what was the number of predictions by each class? And then just OK. And then we can open up that table. So now we have a table where for every different value of ground truth ranging from 1 to 6, how many pixels were there correctly predicted and how many pixels were there incorrectly predicted? So for example, for class 1, there was 10 out of 10 correctly predicted. For class 2, there was 9 out of 10 correctly predicted. Here's the one pixel that on the ground was class 2, clear water, and it was incorrectly predicted to be barren or unvegetated. Okay, and our final step is we'll rearrange this information so that we'll put the truth values as columns and we'll put the predict values as rows and then each cell will be the frequency. So to do that we'll use a geoprocessing tool pivot table. So to do that we'll use a geoprocessing tool called pivot table. Okay so our input table will be our frequency table. And then if we go down to this box saying input fields and click in this box, over here it says input fields, the field that define records. So our records are rows, so we want that to be the predict field. And then our pivot field, if we click in this box, it says that's the field whose record values are used to generate field names. So a field name is a column, so we want that to be truth. And then our value field, that's the field that will populate, so that will be our frequency. And then we'll output to a table. And I named my table classification accuracy table.dbf. This table is often called an error matrix in remote sensing. And then OK. And then we'll look at our error ma matrix. So if we open that table, and I'll hide the first column. 
Okay, so now we have something called an error matrix where in the rows we have our prediction classes and in our columns we have what the class was on the ground. So for example, everything in this column represents all the points on the ground that were turbid water and 10 out of 10 were correctly predicted to be one. Everything in this column represents all the points that were 10 points that were on the ground, clear water, nine out of 10 were correctly predicted to be clear water. This one point was incorrectly predicted to be barren. So if you look at your error matrix, the diagonal represents all the points that were correctly predicted in our classification. So what we could do is we could add up all our correct predictions along the diagonal and then divide that by the total number of ground truth points we have, which was 60, and that will give us the overall classification accuracy of our classification. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I have some quiz questions for you about this video session.